I'm going to start by introducing you to a couple more things about the Python notebook. So if you have a cell and let's say you don't like that cell anymore because, I don't know, it, there's some mistakes in it or you just want to get rid of it, you can click on the little trash icon over here. Now, exactly where this trash icon is located is dependent on which environment you are running Jupyter Notebook in. So on Colab, it's over here. And in other environments, you might see like a scissor sign to cut over here on the top left. So you, you might have to look around a little bit, but it's going to be, you know, something that should be findable within a moment or so. Now, let's say we've created a bunch of variables and we want to clear out the entire Python environment. We want to clear the workspace. This often needs to be done when you are working on code and recreating a lot of variables and so on. So you can click here on runtime and then restart runtime. And then it's going to give us a warning that says, are you sure you want to restart the runtime? All local variables will be lost. So you can say yes. And now we can type whose, as you have already learned before. And now we see that there's nothing. The interactive namespace is empty. We have no more variables because they've all been deleted. And again, this is going to look slightly different in different uh, environments, but it's going to be something like clear and restart variables or restart runtime, something like that. Okay, so the main point of this video is to introduce you to a new type of variable. So you learned about integers and floating points and strings. And now I'm going to introduce you to a new type of variable and it's called a list. So I'm going to create a variable name called a list. And a list is a collection of numbers. It's an ordered collection of numbers. And you indicate a list using square brackets that look like this. This is important because in Python, you have to be really careful about which brackets you're using because square brackets are totally different from parentheses, which are totally different from curly brackets. You've already seen some examples of using uh, parentheses for functions. Later on in a few videos from now, you'll learn about using curly brackets, for example, to create dictionaries. And now we're going to create a list. And here we use square brackets like this. So to create a list, you separate each item using a comma. So we can say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's go for 5. So here I have a list with five or six numbers, 0 through 5. And these are all integers. So we can type a list like this and see we just get back the list. I can type whose to see what is in the workspace here. And we get a list, and this is of type list. Now remember I said that when you have really, really small variables with just a tiny bit of information, then uh, then Python is going to show you all of the information there. But for larger variables, it becomes infeasible to show you the entire contents of the variable. So here we get a little bit of information. And this is telling us that the number of elements in this list is six. This is for a, a number string. Let's do a, or sorry, a number list, a numeric list. We can also make a list full of strings. So I'm going to say string list equals, and now it's the same exact concept. We have individual items that are separated by commas. The only thing different here is I'm going to make those individual items be strings. So we can say, hi, my name is Mike. So again, same idea. We have the individual elements of the string, and they are separated by commas. And then we can see with whose again, it's still just a list. So Python uh, considers this to be the same data type as this. Now we are not limited to uh, lists that have the same exact data type. So we can also have lists with mixed types. So let's call this mix list. And how about, you know, let's make this 4.5 and hello and, you know, uh, the string seven, and then the integer seven, and then the floating point seven. So here we actually have, maybe I'll just get rid of this thing to simplify things. So here we have a list with a string, and then the string seven, the integer seven, and the floating point representation 7.0. Now all of these are different variable types on their own, but together they just produce a 
uh, a variable of type list. So this is still just a list, just like uh, these other lists. And it gets even more flexible than that because we can have a list not just of individual items like what you see here, but we can also have a list of lists. So it's going to get even weirder. So let's say we have uh, three, and then now I'm going to create another list inside this list. So that's going to be three, and then, I don't know, four, and four. And then let's have some other things here. So maybe this will be, I don't know, five, five, and uh, some other large number. So we can print this out, list, list. And then we get the list. So this is the first item in the list. The second item in the list is another list. So you can see it gets a little bit confusing at first, but you can also appreciate, I hope, that lists are very flexible and powerful ways of storing a lot of information. Okay, now this looks a little bit confusing. That's one of the things that makes this difficult to work with in the beginning is that they just kind of look confusing. So what I'm going to do is just expand this line of code onto multiple lines of text. And that's just by, I'm just doing that by pressing the enter key. And let's do it like this. Maybe I'll even put this one on its own. So here we have each item of the list on its own line of text, although Python doesn't actually care about that. Python is still recognizing this as being one list. So the output here hasn't changed compared to when I had it uh, the way I had it before. Now, several videos ago, I introduced you to using the slash operator to expand one line of code into multiple lines of text. In this case, we don't actually need to use the uh, slash operator like this, and that's because we're still working inside the brackets. So for inside the brackets, you can just press the enter key and continue on the next line. Okay, now one thing that's useful about this is that we can start adding some comments. So this is a number and, you know, here we have uh, a list. Now obviously this is, you know, the comments that I'm making here are, are not super interesting, but that's because, you know, I'm just making this stuff up. So in practice, you know, you're gonna be setting these variables to be meaningful. So this might be uh, the parameter for, you know, analysis X or, you know, something like that. So this, this makes it really easy to organize all the information into a list and see what information goes in which element of the list. Very good. So now you know about working, uh, creating lists, and now I'm going to tell you how to work with lists a little bit. So we're going to start by testing whether a particular item is contained within a list. So let's uh, create another list. Let's say list. Actually, this is just basically the one that I created uh, earlier. So we can look at this list and see that the number four is contained inside this list. But we can also use Python to tell us whether that number is there. So we can say four in a list. Now notice the coloring here. So the numbers are all green and the variables are black and other parts of the code are black. And then we have some things in blue. Blue are reserved keywords. These are special keywords. You'll learn quite a few of these as you go throughout the course. So this is asking the question, is the number four one of the elements within the list A? And so the answer that we get back is true. This is a particular type of variable. It's called a Boolean or logical, and it's either going to return true or false. So we can say is 4.5 in a list, and here the answer is false. I'm gonna talk more about Booleans in, uh, in a later video. So we see 4.5 is in a list, and the answer is false. We can actually turn this around and say 4.5 not in a list, and now the answer is true. It's a little confusing at first, but it is true that 4.5 is not in a list. Okay, so let's type who's again to give me a reminder of the lists that we have created here. So who's, and then what I wanna do is try some mathematical operations on these lists because we've already seen that 
Some mathematical operators, like the plus sign and the asterisk, or the star sign, have different meanings. Python will interpret them in different ways depending on the variable types that we are applying them to. So let's see what happens if we try to add a list and string list. Let me start by printing these out again just so we remember what they are. So print a list and str list. So we have the numbers 0 through 5 and the text, hi, my name is Mike. So let's see what happens if we do a list plus str list. So it turns out that uh, Python is going to concatenate these two lists together. So we, we add them, we use the, the plus symbol, and then what we get is first a list and then the string list. So this list and then this list, and that all becomes one list. So we get a result that is one list that results from concatenating the two lists that we've listed here. Okay, so that's pretty interesting to know. And now let's see what happens if we try multiplication. And so I'm going to say a list star three. Now we can imagine two possible outcomes here. One possible outcome is that this star for a list is going to behave like a string. Remember when we multiply a string by a number, we just repeat that string. So I, we can even show that here. So I'm going to say uh, Mike times three gives us Mike, Mike, Mike. Okay, so then, so we can imagine that that would be the behavior. Or we can imagine, because these are numbers, that it's going to be three times each of these individual numbers. So we would get the result of this being 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. So let's see which of those options it ends up being. Okay, so it turns out that the answer is the first one. So what we've done using the asterisk here with a list is to repeat that list three times. So it's working a little bit so the the asterisk operator is working like how it works with strings. So we repeat the list three times. Now, if you actually want to multiply each of the individual elements by three, then, well, you cannot do it in this way with the list. There are two ways that you can do it. You can do it with a for loop or you can do it with the uh, NumPy module using a NumPy array. Both of those methods I will show you later on in the course. Now I'm going to introduce you to something called a method. A method is uh, like a function, but it's a function that you can add it directly onto a variable, and it depends on its type. So let's start by, I'm going to print out a list, just so we have like a, a baseline up here. And then I'm going to say a list dot, so this is just a regular period here, append, and let's do append minus 100. And then we print it out again. So print a list. Now this is called the method. So append is a method of this variable, a list. And you can see it looks a little bit like how we call a function in the sense that we have the name, and then we have the parenthesis, and then there's something inside the parentheses. So let's see what this does. So first we get the list, the original list printed out. And then I did dot append, so I used this method dot append. And then I printed the list out again, and now the list is longer. It has a minus 100. So what we've done here is append this value onto the end of this list. So this is an example of a method. And this append function, this is a method of the list type. So it doesn't necessarily work on a string or an integer. These methods are specific to the type of uh, object, the type of variable that you see here. So now I'm going to show you another one. And that one is uh, sorting. So we can sort. So I'm going to say a list dot sort. And then we print out a list again. Okay. So let's see what happens when I run this entire cell of code, including all this line up, uh, these, this code up here. So now we get the uh, what's no longer the original list because now we've already appended it. So this is the first time I'm running it. And now we run this line of code. So we've actually appended minus 100 twice. The first time was the previous time that I ran this code cell. And now we see it again. And now I type a list dot sort. So this is a method sort. Now, in this case, there are no inputs. 
So I'm just calling this function, this method, and then I print it again. And then you can see here is the result of that, uh, of, of the variable after having sorted it. So this change is actually permanent. It is permanently changing a list. So we can run this code again. And now, you know, we're, every time we run this code, we're just adding more and more hundreds. Maybe I'll, I'll change this to how about 2.5 just to make it a little bit more interesting. So now we append a value of 2.5 and then we're sorting that list. And then you can see it put that 2.5 in over here and then it uh, when it printed it out again. So here I've shown you two different methods, append and sort. How many methods are there of the list type, the list variable type? Well, one way we can find out is by typing a list. And you can always see, I'm sure you've noticed this before, that as I type things and when I move the cursor around, I'm getting these little pop-up help functions. So now I'm gonna type the period here. And this is going to give me a list of all of the methods that are possible to apply to this variable, a list. So here I used append. And what else did I use? Sort, which is all the way down here. There's other ones, you know, it's, I'm not going to go through each of these things, but I do want you to go through these. So let's see, uh, let's get a new cell here. So this is your exercise for this video, is you wanna start by creating a new list and it doesn't really matter what numbers you have in here, but I do want you to add a bunch of sevens. Anything else doesn't matter. Make sure there's at least several sevens in here. So more than one seven. And then what you want to do is find the number, I should say count, count the number of sevens, sevens in the list using a list method. Now I'm not gonna tell you which method you have to use, you can figure that out on your own, but essentially you just want to uh, use a method on list to define or to compute the number of sevens that are contained within this list. So this is actually doesn't count, right? Because we're interested in the number seven, not the string character seven.